On today's episode, I'm gonna show you the process for propagating rosemary. Welcome back to Better Terra. I'm Josh, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you the process for propagating rosemary. I was able to get these uh, clippings recently from a trip. Um, we haven't released a video in a little while. We have had to travel for some family issues and business. And it was on that trip that I was able to get these clippings. During our visits, we were close to South Carolina and we were able to get a tour of an old plantation. What happened to these plantations was terrible. And we're not here to glorify any of those practices in any way, uh, shape or form. Our main reason for the visit was to see um, the old house construction and some of the grounds. And on those grounds during the tour, uh, we were shown where the original vegetable garden was located. And this is where the enslaved peoples were able to grow uh, vegetables for their own consumption. And at that spot, I found a rosemary bush that is hands down the biggest rosemary I've ever seen in my life. We've got a video clip here of uh, Mrs. Bettertera uh, showing just how big the bush was uh, and me taking some clippings. It's possible that this single plant is over 150 years old. Also at the site, we're able to see this massive live oak tree. And you can see my wife here for scale. These are the clippings that I've got. I have uh, five, five young clippings here. And when you're selecting a clipping, you're looking for new growth, um, where it's greener, it's more pliable, and not woody at all. When you find a nice young sprig, uh, this one's a little bit short, but a, a longer one like this, this one's a little woody at the base, but uh, it might be okay. Uh, when selecting one, try to get one that's a little bit longer. And when you find it, use a pair of snips, kind of like these, and trim it just above the junction where it meets the main plant. Now, uh, while we were traveling, I didn't have any snips with me, so I did my best to just break it off from the main plant. I wasn't super worried about damaging the main plant because it's absolutely massive and it's not like we're gonna kill the thing. We're gonna take a look at two different methods for propagation, one in water and one in soil. When I got these clippings, we were traveling and away from home, so I had to protect them a little bit. So I took a, a a damp washcloth and wrap them loosely and then put them in a Ziploc bag and then put them in my, uh, my carry-on bag back in my luggage. So let's dive right in to getting these in some soil and in some water. The last few days since we've been home, they've been in water, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and trim them, remove some of the needles and get them started right. If you like this content, go ahead and click that like button. And if you don't wanna miss something we got coming out this fall, be sure to subscribe. We have a lot of great episodes scheduled. We're gonna do apple cider from picking through fermentation and drinking. Um, we're gonna make a ton of tomato sauce and some uh, variations of sauce in between. Maybe some pizza sauce, maybe some chili base, uh, maybe some tomato soup. Uh, we haven't decided yet, but we have probably around 15 gallons of tomatoes that we've collected all season long and froze for just this purpose. Without further ado, let's get started with the water method. I'm gonna move my soil over here to the side. Now in the cup here, I only have about two inches of water and this is a nice tall cup so that they're able to, uh, to stand. And this is a very easy method. We're gonna start by taking our pruners taking our pruners. And I'm gonna come up from where I broke it off the main branch, um, maybe three quarters of an inch and snip it off. These are great pruners. Uh, if you don't have a pair, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, I use these almost every day for picking, for pruning, um, 
pretty much everything. These things are really fantastic and very cheap. So now that we have a piece trimmed and it flew off the table, we're going to remove about two inches of needles. And that's pretty easy here. You just kind of gather them together with your fingers and then just strip them off. So with some stem uh, exposed and uh, nice trimming, we're just gonna go ahead and put it in the water. And the goal is with the water depth is not to let it touch um, up on the, uh, on the needles. We'll move on to the next one. This one's a little thicker. I'm gonna come up with just a smidge higher to get above the really tough parts. And then the same thing. Come up about two inches, grasp around the needles and just strip it off. Oh, it smells fantastic. This thing was so big and I was digging through it. At the end, I had rosemary sap all over my fingers and for the rest of the day, um, moving around before I could really get my hands washed, I smelled heavily of rosemary. In that same garden plot, there was also a very large thyme plant, um, about one quarter of the size of the rosemary, but there was thyme there. Um, the tour guide didn't have any information about the thyme, but um, specifically did for, the, for this rosemary. All right, so we have uh, three here in water, uh, one nice sized one, two kind of small ones. Now we're gonna leave those be, and we're gonna move on to the soil method. Now with the soil method, we're gonna start the same way. This is exactly the same. Trim off a bit, strip off needles. Go ahead and do this. This one is really big. I'm gonna come up a smidge higher. This one is a little robust, but it's starting to get green in this area. It's got a little woodiness here. So I'm gonna strip off a little higher on the needles here. And with the soil method, we're gonna add a little uh, root hormone. But this isn't specifically root hormone, this is just plain cinnamon. And this works as a rooting hormone. So we're gonna open, pour a little tablespoon or so in a small container. And then with our stem, we want it just to be a damp. We're gonna use the water there. I think we might need a little more water higher up here. There we go. Damp stem. And then we're gonna use our um, cinnamon and just coat the bottom section. <laughs> with cinnamon. And then, just as easy as this, we're just gonna poke it down into the soil. How could it be any easier than that? I got some water on the table here. I'm gonna use it to damp the stem. Same thing. Just coat it really nice. And then poke it down in the soil. The soil method and the water method for propagating cuttings. And lots and lots of plants use this exact same method. Um, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison over here over the next couple weeks and see uh, which one does better. In the soil method, I just have a regular um, starter and clipping uh, soil mix, and it was uh, pre-moistened. Uh, that stuff is pretty water resistant uh, beforehand, so always pre-moistened. -mo pre uh, it's nice and packed. Now, from this stage, we don't want to put this in the sun. These are very delicate right now. So we want to put them in a shaded spot, um, no direct sunlight. And we, we have a spot right here on the side um, where we're gonna put these. That's it for this episode. It was short 
and to the point, and I hope that you learned something. Again, if you don't wanna miss these upcoming episodes, be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions about propagation, leave me a question down in the comments. I'm happy to answer. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on working toward a better Terra, one tiny growth at a time.